Hello, this is Lakesh. How are hey, you? Hey, Lakesh, thank you for coming. It is my pleasure to come. Oh, is that Max? Hello, Max. How are you? Um, I'm wonderful. Thank you. Very good. Oh, who are we looking at here? So, uh, our friend uh, Khan from Turkey. Oh, uh, yes, they, I know. Painted that. some aliens, and um, I wonder if you could comment on you know, what you know about these guys. Okay. It is hard for me to see through his eyes. Does he have some kind of... Ah, oh, yes. Never mind. He said it's over here. One moment, please. It's amazing what you can do when you come into the body. Ah. Yes, this is... This is like a halfway in between version. But it does look like the, the shape of the head is um, actually reptilian looking. But the features and everything else looks sort of yil. So it's sort of a yil. The, you see how pointy the chin is. That looks more you, you, uh, reptilian. However, the, the facial expression and features look more yil. But if I know that it, it actually looks more you yield than anything else. Uh, let, let's do another one. Yes, these are, that is very much, oh, my goodness. He gets the, the species, they are like halfway in between. Mm -hmm. But they are beautiful, beautiful beings. These are like hybrids. What hybrid is that? This is a, a reptilian Yu-Gi-Oh hybrid also. This one on my left. I cannot see this one over here very well. The right is the same. Oh, just a different view. I see. Uh -huh. It looks like a reptilian Yu-Gi-Oh hybrid because of the shape of the head. Mm -hmm. Now, you see, a Yu-Gi-Oh head would be sort of separated in the middle. Really? And sort of a, a little bit heart-shaped, but not quite. Whereas this is definitely a more a reptilian shape for the head, depending on the species. You see, some species of uh, reptilians still have the snout and things, and other ones do not. So that is like halfway in between. There's no snout on this one, but the shape of the head is reptilian looking to me. If it had scales, and it was, but you see the eyes and the mouth and the nose, they're all you yell without the shape of the head. Uh, wonderful. Let's, let's keep moving. I, I, I learned something. Hmm, that is too big. Let me zoom it out. Here we go. Can you see? Hold on. Ah, yes. Um, that's very unusual. That is, the eyes look Pleiadian. Uh, the rest of it, I'm not sure. All right, let's move on. Yes, another you yield face. Uh, but the ears. Yes, the ears are different. But the facial expressions and features are more you yield Got it. because they're closer to humans. Got it. The ears look um, like your human uh, elementals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. So, so it's like a hybrid of elemental and you yield. Okay. So, but, oh, and what is this? That looks Liren. Ah, how Liren is it? It, but the ears are wrong. There's no big ears like that on Liren, but everything else is correct. Wow. Okay. Um, they can have hair like that, but the ears are too big. They're, they have evolved into a... The ears are almost non-existent. They're very small. And so that is, you yell, like um, eight centuries ago. Okay. I mean, not you yell, Liren. Ah. Uh. But see the eyes? The eyes are 
a little more human than that now. So that is an old species Lyran. Or maybe there is a species like that still existing, but I do not know of it. It might be still third dimensional and not space bound yet. Mm -hmm. Which is very possible. I will ask Shakur about that. She would know of all the, the species that are like Lyran or cat-like. Mm -hmm. They may have another name. How about this one? Can you make that bigger, please? Trying to. Is it better? Ah, uh, that's a little better. That looks like me. <laughs> a little bit like me, yes. I'm a, I am shaped quite a lot like that. Um, I'm a little bigger, wider, and bluer. But facially, similar. Yes. He's got me down a little bit. Uh, what corrections could you suggest? Well, I'm bluer. Uh, the eyes are fine. I don't smile quite that big. The skin is a little bit rougher. I'm not smooth like that. But uh -huh. believe me, that's very close. Okay. But very close, yes. Uh, uh, but, um, and he's correct not to put big ears on there. That's good. And um, let's see. Let me look it like this. I cannot see any ears at all. Is there any ears on there at all? Uh, I don't see any ears. That is correct. There should not be any. Uh-huh. And, but it's a very playful picture. Very playful. Um, but it is similar to what I look like. I'm a little fatter and wider, a little bluer. And it is, uh, you know, I don't walk or I do glide. But that is similar to what I do. Yes, look at the feet. That's, he's done a great job on that. That is the closest thing I've seen to me so far. How about uh, palms and fingers? Yes, that's correct. Four fingers. Four? I see only three on the picture. Is there only three there? I can through uh -huh. these eyes. It's hard to see, but no, I have four fingers. Uh, do and, you have like any genitalia? Pardon me. Do you have any genitalia? Yes, we do. So the picture shows you kind of in a dress. Oh, you are naked, right? You unless you have a ceremony, you go naked, right? But he has with us with clothes on there. That's the genitalia does not show. Okay. He is, uh, so, um, yes, he is, has us wearing clothes. But usually we're make naked from the waist down, and we just wear a shirt, and most of the time that covers all the way down. Oh. But it's not necessary, it does not necessarily have to, but our, our mode of dress is we usually just w do not dress up uh, with a lot of clothing unless there is a ceremony. And if there is a ceremony, then we dress up and we put clothes all over and jewelry all over and you cannot see anything. So, but in this picture, it looks like I'm wearing what you might call a jumpsuit or something. Uh-huh, I see. But how I do, that is not, we do not really wear anything like that. How about the neck? What about it? Uh, is it right? Let me see. It's not bad, very similar. All right. Yes, it's very similar. That is a very good picture of a uh, blue, uh, a dark blue, small Pleiadian. Oh, wonderful. All right. However, not the expressions necessarily. I mean, I do have a smile, but it's not quite that big. Oh, so you smile in the same way as we do? I smile, but not that big. But you pull your mouth sideways with muscles? Yes, but a lot of times we don't use it because we do uh, telepathy and, and psychic communications. So it's a little smaller than that, actually. Do you have teeth? Uh, we use our teeth for uh, chewing and eating, yes. We don't have as many as all that. We have food that is easy to digest and is easy to chew. 
So how many teeth do you have? Probably 20. I mean, probably. About 20. Okay. Well, how about uh, nostrils? Do you have same nostrils? <laughs> They're a little smaller also. Oh, smaller than you have, right? Yeah, those are... We do have a large nose compared to that. Uh -huh. It's a little larger than that because we use the sense of smell for other things. Uh huh. So the nose sticks out as as, as human nose. But yes. How, yes. how close are you are you to humans? You are mammals, right? We are. Well, we have a different base. We're not silicone base, or we are. I mean, we are not. Uh, Carbon based, we are silicone based. But otherwise, are you mammals? Yes, I guess you could call us that. And a skeleton would look somewhat similar. similar. Yeah, okay. Similar, not the same, but similar, very, very similar. Okay. All right, thank you. That's, that helps. All right, let's move on. Um, hold on, I will open it in a new tab. Here we go. Oh, that is, um, the head looks insectoid. Really? Uh-huh. Because of the eyes and the shape of the head. However, and the rest of it, actually, it does represent some insectoid. But the body would not be like that. It would be, um, it would be covered in armor, you know, like insect armor like some of them have wings some of them do not some mm -hmm. but there would be a, an armor an exoskeleton as you would mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so but the face looks very insectoid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that is a, a very common species of insectoid and actually the face would have some armor on it as well especially on the top of the head and the back of the head what, uh, what would be the name of that species? One moment, please. Well, we call them insectoids. There are several different insectoid species. Mm -hmm. This one looks like the Vensuta. Vensuta? Yes, but they would say... Okay. Right. We would pronounce it in the galactic language as Vensuta. But they cannot speak like we do because they do not have a larynx. They rub together some things in the throat that I do not know what they would call it. All right, thank you. Um, next one. Ah, that looks almost human. Mm -hmm. um, the thing is, the shape of the head is still, uh, well, let's see. That looks more human than anything else to me. Mm -hmm. I cannot really put, the, the eyes are you yill, but the face shape is actually human. Many humans have a shape of face like that. It's a very common face shape. And uh, the eyes are bigger than human, so they, that would be uh, you yill. The hair, since there is hair on it, that would be a human trait as well. Ah. Yeah, yell would be often uh, hairless. You yell often are bald, yes. That some of them have white hair and some of them have grayish hair and some have silver blue hair, but it's very, very thin and not very, not very much. Mm -hmm. Next one. Oh, that's definitely a gray but it looks like a gray hybrid with a reptilian because of the shape of the head. Uh, that shape of the head, I do not know if it exists mm -hmm. with that species at all. Okay. But the eyes are definitely, oh, they're reptilian for sure. That is the, um, that is the zestpod, the zestpoid. Okay. Species. Yes. That looks very zespoid. And actually, the eyes are almost correct. Uh, the snout, the teeth are sharper and longer a little bit. The tongue is split in the middle. And that is about the only difference I see. 
and it's scalier. I see no scales on this, but the shape and the look very much the same. How about the smile? Um, is that a smile? Yes, it looks like a smile to me. Do they smile? They can, yes. But I, I do not see very many reptilians up close and personal. Ah. I do see them on the screens, and I do speak to them over the, what you might call a, an internet or things of that nature. But I really don't see them in person. Mm -hmm. To me, that uh, if it, its teeth were longer and sharper, that wouldn't look like a smile. Ah, how about the palms? The hands? Yeah. They're pretty good. I think some of the species have four fingers. This one, it looks like three. Mm -hmm. uh, but some of them have four. Okay. Some of them do have three. The zespoids has, have four, but the shape of the hand is correct. Okay. The picture says uh, Grindel. Is it really like... Oh, he's a zespoid, yes. Okay. Um, Grindel, he got it very close. He's very close, <laughs> except that the teeth are too, too human looking. They have to be sharper right. and longer. And um, the eyes are a little bit more reptilian than that. And there's a, a fourth finger. And the scaliness, I don't see the scaliness. All right. They do have a more rough, scalier skin. Okay. But other than that, uh, when I just look at it and glance at it, yes, it's de definitely Zespoid. Wonderful. Thank you. That's um, great help. All right. Uh, that is not neat. Oh, this one. Ah, I'm not sure what that is. It looks like a combination of a cat species of some sort. Okay, let's move on. And so does that. And yes, the, look at the ears. That is a Lyran species many centuries ago. Ah. Could it be Takur? No. Takur does not have ears like that. But I can tell you her eyes are very similar to that. And her the nose is way too big for Takur. Her uh -huh. nose is very flat and small. Okay. Her nose is very flat. She doesn't have a protruding nose at all. So if you would take that nose and smash it, and take the eyes and make them a little bit more cat-like, but she does have human eye li eyes like that, and take the ears and get rid of those ears, mm -hmm. then yes, that could be to occur. How about a beard? What? A beard? Yes, from, all right, look at, my, look at me as I do this. From the forehead down through the nose area and on the cheeks, there is no hair. But there is hair all down here. All right. So, yes. And on the head. And it's very tight fur like that. Yes. It's very tight. She's not a long-haired cat. She oh. is a, a, a short-haired being. Okay. So, all over her body, there is very close hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes. The beard is correct. Great help. Thank you. Great help. All right. Uh, but the nose is not correct. I think that's right. what I see the most. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not really looking at the ears, but if you want to smash the nose there and, and make sure that it's, it's flat, mm -hmm. not, not sticking out. And that will look much like to curve face on, yes. Okay. Next. I think you already commented on it and you said it is like Pentium, no? That looks a little like Pentium, yes. He is Yu-Gi-Oh, except of course, the head does not separate in the middle. There is a little bit of a heart shape to the head, not a great deal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some greys have a very heart shaped head, but the yu gi have a very small heart-shaped head, and this looks like pen, Tim, mm -hmm. very much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, what else? Uh, ears? Actually, 
let's see. Those ears are, are they pointy? I don't, I, see any, I don't see any ears on that picture. I can't see the ears very well. Hold on. I don't think there are ears on the picture. So just describe Pentium's ears. Pentium has very small ears. They're very, very small. But they okay. do stick out from the head, out on the sides. Okay. But they're very small. Um, you see, telepathy is their major language. So they do not need ears to hear voices. They do need ears to hear the sounds of machinery and things and can be used as warning symbols. But usually anything that is soft sounding is not necessarily dangerous, at least in their society. So mm -hmm. it pick up larger sounds. Yep, yep, makes sense. Are the eyes? The eyes are fine. Uh, do Pentium, does Pentium have black eyes without? They're dark, yes. I mean, I'm not sure if they are black, but they are dark. Right here, the eyes look like uh, full eye is dark without the structure. It's like um, sunglasses, right? That's what Yael have? The Yael have large eyes like that, sometimes a little bit more oriental looking, as you would call them, a little more slanted. These ones are a little more oval, but still re resembles him quite a bit. Uh, but they need to be slightly more oriental looking because they are round. They are the the gray shaped eyes, and um, the mouth is almost perfect. He has a very small mouth. He is a little bit a uh, bit of a uh, a rougher skin, but it's not scales. It is just uh, a texture kind of thing for mm -hmm. their skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So their te the texture of their skin is not extremely soft, mm -hmm. it, but it does have some texture to it. Mm -hmm. I, I know about that. Yeah. It's pretty mm -hmm. much like it. Yeah. Uh, I think they have five fingers, though, don't they? The, I don't yeah. know. Some of them, some of the, the uh, gray species do now have five fingers, and some have four, and four or five is the most. Uh -huh. How many does this one have? Looks three. They should have four. Okay. Um, let's come back to the eyes. So on this, like, you know, we have the eyes with the iris. The yes. iris is colored, pupil is black, and there is a, a, a white around. So yes. our eye is structured. Right. And that is very human looking. I cannot see the in, I just see the black part. I don't see that there's any color but it should be all solid in the middle there, no color. But the white around the edge is fine. I'm, so, I'm speaking about us. We have structured eyes, but some yeah. species have more like just um, sunglass kind of eye with yeah. no structure. So what would be uh, Pentium's eyes? Would they have uh, iris? They would have more of a solid black center or brown, or dark, whatever it is. Well, it would be a dark center. There would be no color like blue or green or anything like that. They would be dark. Uh, would it be, would it have white on the side? Around, around the sides, yes. They have evolved over the last several centuries to have that, no, more than that. It's been millennia, several millennia. That they, I'm using the wrong word. Mm -hmm. to have somewhat of a white color in the, the sides of the eyes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move next. There has been some hybridization within the last few millennium that, that they have come to accept. And that is because they know, the reason why they accepted it is because at one point, they were in atmospheres that were very dim and their eyes needed to be dark and solid to bring in as much light as possible. But now they're, after millennia of change, they are no longer in these dim atmospheres. And so the acceptance of this white portion and the, the uh, smaller eye portion is being very acceptable. It helps them with their vision more. So that's an image of uh, what? That's reptilian. 
Uh-huh. That is a species called the uh, Eliashon Dizendi. Oh, so it, it they, is... they do have a little bit more of a muzzle than this, but the rest of it looks very, very much like their species. So not the species with which it deals with Earth. I don't think it was among the Earth's species, right? They are around the Earth now. Oh, they are. They are talking to certain people. They would like a representative to be an ambassador to their planet. But they're, they look, they have more of a muzzle mm -hmm. than this. But it, I can see where if it just was a, would elongate along the, the mouth, that would be very similar. And they had sharp, a little more teeth. Uh -huh. uh, this would just bring out the mouth and the muzzle and, and uh, include the nose in that muzzle. Those eyes and the shape of the head is very much like the Elia Shandai Zendi. Wonderful. Uh, among the five species which we mentioned for frequently, would it be one of the five or would it be like the sixth? That would be the sixth, yes. Okay. On a scale uh, of friendliness to humans, how friendly would they be? They're very friendly, actually. They're fifth dimensional. Ah. They are actually a very high reptilian species. They have, their species broke off and has two representations of their, of their species. There was a portion of their species that uh, evolved faster than another sector. And so the third dimension, the high third dimensional portion of their species is no longer in Andromeda. It is elsewhere, but they still have their home planet of Andromeda, in Andromeda mm -hmm. with the several other, um, there's several other home planets there that they call home planets because they have uh, occupied them. They were not occupied at one time and now they are, but they're the species of the same species broke off at mm -hmm. one point about 8,000 years ago and is still high third dimensional. And they are, they're not as advanced as the Elia Shondai Zendi in the fifth dimension in Andromeda. So therefore, the, third, the high third dimensional species is elsewhere. They do have some living on the planet, but they do not really associate much together because mm -hmm. they are so different. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason they broke off from that is that the, the third dimensional portion did not want to ascend but the, a certain portion did ascend and continued to ascend where the third dimensional sector that mm -hmm. broke off did not want to ascend and mm -hmm. remained in a, in a third dimensional state. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. There is a long story with the Elias Shondai Sendi, but I, I've told you most uh, uh, basics. They are now, the fifth dimensional portion is around Earth, though, and they have a representative that they would want to use as an ambassador. And the, your United States is actually aware of them. They came into your uh, atmosphere about eight months ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and communicated together. But you see, your government is still thinking that they were there to attack because they see what they look like and they're sort of frightened by them. They're mm -hmm. not pretty. And this one is actually more handsome looking than they are with the snout that comes out about four or five inches. So, but they are very friendly and are fifth dimensional and from Andromeda. How tall are they? They're actually fairly tall. I believe they're in the six foot something range. Uh huh. Uh, are they predators? They were at one time, but they are no longer predators as such. Mm -hmm. They still eat meat, but only their meat from their planets mm -hmm. and the 
meat that they have from their culture. They do not like any human meat. It's very different. And so they, and they like humans as a species, and they want to get their message across that they are friendly, and they want to have a good relationship with the earth. Uh-huh. Are they, uh-huh. What is he saying? Is there words coming out of his mouth? Yeah, who cares? Um, the, it, it was um, a Khan who drew that. He was thinking he was painting, uh, what's his name? Um, Grindel? Grindel, yeah. This is, doesn't look like the same picture of Grindel than the last one. All right. This is much more Elias Shondai Zendi. Mm-hmm. Even though they originally, um, millennium, about probably 600,000 years ago, came from the same species, mm -hmm. they are very different now. Uh-huh. Um, are they genetically related to us? Not genetically, no. But we, we uh, oh, not we, you have had them on your planet many times, and they have given some of your people some hybridization. And so you will find that both of those species will be in your background as part of your humanization. Ah, okay. Interesting. So they are also ancestors. Yes, they, there are many ancestors on Earth. All right. Okay. This one, I don't know... I don't think we've looked at that. Is it Pentium? That looks like him a little, yes. All right. At that least is the one that looks like Pentium a bit. Khan, Khan marked it as Pentium. He what? Um, the, the label on the picture says Pentium. Does it? Mm-hmm. Well, very good then. He got uh, it, how old is Pentium? Pentium... On, in Earth years is probably 80 or so, somewhere around 80. So he is very young? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, who could be that? Oh, that looks a little like Ish. No, it doesn't. That Ish is a draconian. Who am I thinking of? Shell. The uh, Chokani. Mm-hmm. Who does he say it is? He doesn't say anything. This looks like a little like the Chikani race. Of course, there are differences, but the head shape, the way the eyes are, and uh, the garb actually looks very Chikani. Um, the, the, the long, thin neck is very Chikani. So that's why I'm thinking it looks like them. Mm. Uh, the shape of the head is a little off. It mm. is a, a slightly bigger in the brain top. It, it comes down to a point at the bottom, but the head would be bigger at the top. Uh. A bigger bulbous head. Uh-huh. But well, other than that... How about the nose? Actually, actually the nose is not that bad. The mouth? And the mouth, they have very small mouths as well. So that's a little bit, but not really a gigantic difference. How about the, the ears? The ears are perfect. And uh, are they bold? What? Are they bold? Bold? Yeah. What do you mean by that? Uh, no hair. Oh, are they bald? I see. Um, yes, Chikani are bald for the most part. That is something of tradition more than it is of um, actuality. They shave their heads at some point in, when they become mature, and then um, they put a substance on it that causes the hair not to grow any longer. I see. Thank you. Wonderful. What about this? Uh, that is... That looks like, one moment, I can't see it. That's a gray. The gray, the eyes are gray. 
of a gray species. The head is somewhat of a gray species. A little larger, the head would be fatter, but it still looks like a gray species. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see, I cannot see the nose at all. Okay. Yeah, the nose is barely visible. Let me. That is fine. That would be perfect for a gray. There should be no nose visible on some of the gray species. The, 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 it looks like they're wearing a mask. That is very correct. A mask? Yes. Oh. You see how the face plate is out from the head? Hmm. Do you see that? Yeah, so they're wearing masks? No, they, they are not, but the, the face plate is, has separated from the head mm -hmm. so that they can... Uh, the reason for this is that uh, the jaw and the eyes and different things are, are uh, more connected to the brain than in any other species. They're very, very fast connections. For what reason, we do not know, but on examination, the faceplate of the uh, certain species of greys are a little protruded out from the brain portion. Does that make sense to you? And we're not sure why that is. It was probably a protective thing at one time, but they probably do not need that protection any longer. But they did come from planets where they're, they're animals and uh, were very hostile, and so they probably had to think faster and move and react quicker than some other species to survive. That looks a little like the, uh, the head except for the chin, of a, um, the mantis species. The mantis species has a head like that, except that it goes back, and at the top, the, it does come out to a point. The, it does come to a more of a point at the head, and the jaw comes out to a little more of a point, actually. They have a very pointy head, but that, the eyes are perfect for the mantis creatures and there is no ears, and the mouth is more of a working, uh, since they are insectoid, uh, they have a disconnected jaw in the sense, this looks like a human jaw, but their jaw comes out to a point, and then the top part is fine, but like they don't really have a nose, it's more of a, a, cl a, a clamp kind of a jaw but the eye is perfect. And the head is getting to the point where it's, it's getting pointier, yes. This looks like a mantis being if it would just elongate a little more on the top and bottom, and the mandible or the jaw would come out on the bottom as a, a little bit of a hook like this. Do you understand? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that, and that species, I am not aware of what that is. Okay. This one? Oh, yes. Um, actually, that looks like a, a hybrid canine species. Hmm. The, the actual, it, it looks like one of your superheroes on Earth. But it is actually, um, the canine spe species are covered with fur, of course, even on the top part, even down to the nose. But these are good, that's a good version of the, uh, a, an animal canine face. Mm-hmm. They do have some ears, though, a little bit. I think we are done with everybody. That's uh, fine. There, uh, there is tons more in um, 
in a different site, but uh, I don't have access now, and I think it's it's good for now. Thank you very very much. It's it's a, it's a great help. Very uh, well. Yes, many of them look like hybridizations forms of their species. Mm -hmm. Now that I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I really don't. It does not look familiar to me at all. But it is a rather frightening looking being. Uh -huh. Interesting though, this eye seem dislodged from the head portion. They might move out or be able to look around corners or things of that nature. This would be a species that I would like to study Hmm. Okay, I'm just pressing buttons trying to get back to uh, to how we were. Yes, it looks like a species of remedial intelligence also. Look at the head, it's very small. Brain capacity would be smaller than most of the others. Hmm. So I'm thinking this is maybe a third dimensional creature that is just now starting to evolve from some okay. other planet somewhere. But oh. they were able to get, he was able to get there in his thought processes, which is very interesting. He seems like quite a talented young man. Mm. So, I wish I could see them better. I would be able to give you more information, I am sure. Thank you, it helps. Very good. Thank you, that's all, thank you, great help. You're welcome. Have a wonderful day and be very blessed. You too, thank you.